Good morning, I'm Lynn, and welcome to another fun-filled day at Utopia Farms. So there is a raccoon getting into our feed room, and Arnie set a live trap because I won't let him kill him. And instead he caught a baby. So we can't take a baby away because there's a mom here and he's not old enough to be without his mom. So we're gonna release him back again. And this time to prevent them going into the feed room, we're gonna get Arnie to shut the door. Kind of a simple solution. Lynn, do you see a door there? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we let him out, back into the feed room, when I wanted him to go into the hay barn where he wouldn't cause any problems. But he's way up in the rafters already. I don't think you can see him. As you can see, haying is on the agenda again, and will be for at least another week. And at that point it goes on hold because we'll be heading to the All Canada Sheep Classic in Ancaster, Ontario, which is near Toronto. We'll be staying there a few days. Yesterday, while I was weeding the garden, we had someone come in and they bought 54 bales of our last year's dry hail, hay. So that was fortuitous because uh, now we have room to put our new dry hay in once we start taking dry hay off. So everything works out. Morning rush hour again. Half going in that gate over there, and half we're gonna go this way. Oh, but they decided no, we're gonna follow the biggest crowd. Both both gates go to the same spot, but they gotta be together. There's Angel. Now they gotta wait as everyone funnels through the gate and out into the pasture. We got rain coming in this afternoon, so Arnie's uh, out in the fields and I'm doing morning chores because uh, the rush is on again. When the wool comes off, you can start to see how they're built underneath. And you'll notice our sheep have um, black under their chins and under uh, like their neck. And that's um, from eating at those feeders. The rubbing of the wool makes it look like they've got black wool when actually they don't. I mean, it's, it's stained like that, but um, it's called feeder rub. And Suffolk's get that. So if you see them at the shows and you think, oh, they got black fiber, it's actually not. If it's around the neck like that, and they're feeding from a feeder that's at, at head level like ours, it's always feeder rub. You're so pretty though. And today I was also trimming hunchy. Oh, I got the I got the quad all trimmed off there. She's almost finished. She's not a show sheep, but she is a keeper. Hunchy, hunchy, show yourself. Come on. This is hunchy. Hi. Hi, Hunchy. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hunchy. Hi. You look stunning. <laughs> oh, Hunchy. You are a nice girl. 
You are so pretty. So pretty. The reason uh, they're only partly done is because usually they're I'll go and they'll let me start trimming and then they'll lay down for a little while and then when they've had enough they just get up and walk away <laughs> so they're not they're not tied up or anything so and Hunchy actually got up and turned around and lay back the other way so I got part of her on one side hi Hi, you look really nice too. Hi. And the wrapping goes on and on and on and on. supposed to rain until 7, but it definitely has cleared up now. So Arnie was able to get a lot more wrapped. And now we've got a really good runway for moving sheep around again. We didn't get it all wrapped, however, and it looked like everything was clearing up, and then this started. We didn't even have a chance to get his wrapper put away or anything. I don't know. People. The weather is crazy these days. We were just talking, me and Arnie, that uh, we haven't had a thunderstorm because it's been too cold, because today's much cooler, and now we got thunder and lightning. Give me 20 bucks and run up there with nothing on? Okay, I'll give you 20 bucks. Yeah, I'm about that. And I'll film it. You didn't have to blame it too good, huh? There's a crack of thunder and all the ewe lambs ran in. <laughs> we had a, quite a storm last night. And you can see, uh, if you look at the bale, you can see how the outside got quite wet, but the inside, you can see, is still dry. I mean, these are wet bales anyway, so they're not totally dry, so they should be fine. But, yeah, ideally you don't want them to get rained on. But better than laying flat on the field. Flat on the field, they just get drenched right the way through. And when you have to re-dry it, um, it just isn't the same. For some reason, it gets a funny smell. It just doesn't cure right. So, um, you do not want your hay when it's on the ground to get wet. And according to our little rain man, we got just under an inch of rain last night. And to be honest, we needed it. So good for everything that's trying to grow. Our, like our tomatoes, everything is behind because they got planted late because of so much rain. But we finally got baby tomatoes coming. 
and uh, we'll go check on the barley uh, shortly and see uh, how it's doing now. Well, into the barn. Important things first. Tommy's got his food. Hi, Tommy. Are you feeling a little more friendly these days? Hi. Well, he doesn't run off quite as easily now, so he is slowly starting to warm up to us. Um, all of uh, our barn cats are strays that appeared here one day, and the ones that have stayed here, uh, those guys that arrived here, they seem to stay here. And because they're all boys, we don't have a kitten or cat problem here. So everyone in the barns are looking good. Somebody asked about uh, uh, if we uh, are going to put these bread ewes in, in the pasture once uh, we remove the rams. And the answer is no, we're not. These guys are going to stay indoors until they learn. The reason for that, if you watch our videos regularly, you'll see that it's very nice to let the sheep out into the pasture, but when you do let them out, they're going to get parasites, they're going to get foot problems. It seems inevitable. You guys, are you a little hungry? You can't be that hungry. We'll let them get fed before I continue. There. So, because they're going to be pregnant, we don't want to be uh, deworming them and giving them drugs and stuff like that if they have issues in the field. So for their health, for the lamb's health, um, they're just better off indoors and they can go out in the fall after they've lambed. But um, they will be indoors all, all summer. Um, Sounds like a cruel thing, but it's actually, uh, you can see every day that uh, these guys never, ever have a problem <laughs> because indoor you don't seem to have any health problems as long as you're feeding them correctly and have everything healthy in the barns, which we do, but you can't control nature outside and that's when the problems come, the bugs, the parasites. Um, yeah, the diarrhea, the limping, the cracked hooves, the scald, it, um, it's just too much. So we like to keep pregnant sheep as healthy and drug free as possible. So that is why we keep these ewes indoors. The boys, however, they're outdoors 100% of the time. They've done their part for breeding and uh, they would also have less health problems if they stayed indoors, but we do like them to be outside. There are some benefits to being outdoors. Nice fresh feed, exercise, fresh air, the sunshine. But, uh, yeah. To make my point on how sheep don't do as well when they're out at pasture, and I guess it the, isn't, it's not that they don't do as well, but they uh, are gonna have more issues. Um, our ewe lambs right now who are at a pasture, uh, we've had a few cases of diarrhea that I've been treating for the last few days. I'm just spot treating them. If I see them with diarrhea, I give them a dewormer. But one of them, if they get really bad diarrhea and it's congealed on their tails, I will catch them and trim the dirt away and uh, the wool away. And one little one I trimmed yesterday and I couldn't videotape it because Arnie was um, wrapping hay 
and I just obviously didn't have the hands available and I didn't have a tripod in here because as you know I can't carry tripods around so I trimmed her up and she had maggots and I always said we don't get them but yeah she had them so it took me quite a while to trim all the wool away and make sure that uh, I got every single little maggot off her. So, yeah, things like that just don't seem to happen in the barn. So I looked at her uh, yesterday and she looks good. But I have another girl in here today, one of our keepers, that has a dirty bum. So I'm going to get Arnie to catch her for me so I can uh, trim the wool off and make sure that she doesn't have maggots either because that is nasty 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 I can only I seriously have only ever seen it twice in my life this is the second time and I don't want to see it any more times <laughs> so this girl had diarrhea so I just took the scissors and cleaned her all off and uh, we gave her some dewormer but she didn't have any maggots but after seeing one, I wanted to make sure that I had her fully crutched so that uh, no wor worms, flies laid their eggs there. It's a nasty thing, but she's done. She should be good. There was just one more that I thought needed treating. From watching the videos, you know what kind of day it is. When they come out slowly, it's a hot day. When they come out really fast and raring to go, it's a nice cool day. Arnie is out wrapping again and I'm in the Dorset Ulam pen. And you know we've just let them out on pasture recently too. And sure enough I got a ulam there who's got diarrhea and I got a catcher, treater with dewormer and I gotta cut those uh, manure tags off her. So it could be a challenge because these white ones are fast and they are not friendly. So we'll give her a go. Okay, I caught her. Wasn't a pretty sight, but I treated her, got her trimmed off. She's pretty mucky. And we know if the dewormer has worked because the next day where their bum and wool was all wet and mucky, today, after you treat them, uh, usually it's all dry and hardened. And that's how you know that it has worked. So I'm off to have a shower and I don't think you're going to join me there. So is pasture grazing sheep all it's cracked up to be? Probably not, in my opinion. Would I get rid of pasture grazing? Also, probably not. I have to say that there's something about watching sheep out in the pasture that uh, is very appealing, it's very nice, it's comforting, and uh, I hope that we can always do that, but I must admit that there we find there is way more issues in the summertime with them out on pasture. Um, we don't have nearly the health issues when we keep them indoors. So um, basically, I think if you're going to do outdoor pasture grazing in Canada. Um, you got to be prepared and watch out for those parasites. Uh, rotational grazing definitely helps, but um, it doesn't stop it. That's why we're constantly moving sheep into different pastures though. Um, it, it helps get a lid on the parasite problem. And yeah, if the fields are mucky, you really got to suck it up and keep them indoors, I think, because 
Um, the foot issues with scald and limping and cracked tubes are another problem that you just don't get indoors if your if your barn is uh, well maintained. Of course, if you're leaving your barn mucky and stuff, the same things can happen indoors. But I'm talking about you know everything being great. So, yeah, I don't love sheep dying because I put them out to pasture. But I do love that uh, they have freedom. Um, and I feel that letting them outside does give them that freedom. But nature um, is tough. And um, animals in the wild live very short lives. And there's a reason for that. It's tough outdoors um, with the weather and the parasites and everything else. So it's a choice you have to make, but um, to say one is better than the other, I really think uh, you can make the best of both pasture and confinement sheep farming. And uh, you just have to know what you're looking for and be on top of things. I thought that was gonna be the end. But it's not. Arnie called me because the lambs got out, so I gotta go put them away. There they are. The escape artists. Who can blame them? There's lots of hay out here. Come on, you guys. Well, it's hardly an escape when he leaves the gate right open. Good boy, Max. Come on. But whether you're indoors or outdoors, one thing that becomes of great importance when you have sheep is making sure when you leave the pen, you shut the gate. So normally we don't bring the sheep in at night. Usually they come in on their own. But Arnie's working late again tonight. And I have stuff that I have to do in the house, like my video. So um, I'm gonna get everybody rounded up for him so he doesn't have to come out and do that. Um, cause it's getting dark, cause it's close to nine o'clock now. And yeah, I, I hate bringing them in early, but we're gonna we're gonna herd them up with the dogs here and get them to come in half an hour early. See, if I had a border collie that was trained, I could just tell them to go out and pick them up. But I think the and if enough sheep do this type of thing, see the old girls know the routine. The rest will follow. You see, gray noses. Come on, Ben. The handy thing about sheep is they are followers. Now, we need those ones at the very back to turn around and see what's going on though. They got their heads the other way. Oh, one's got her head up. I've seen it. Here they come. I could have waited, gone in the house and let them come in on their own, but uh, because it is going dark, this well, we like them to come in before it's fully dark, and they usually do because uh, we can we can check that nobody's stuck in a fence or injured or left in the pasture. This way I can see that there's nobody left in here. Of course, we got some on the other side of the runway over there. And then one at the very, very back.
Okay. The fact that she's back there all by herself is a problem. So we'll go see what her problem is, why she's back there by herself. Crying. There she goes. She just thought she had to run the other way. <laughs> Sometimes they get their heads stuck in the fence or something silly. There's my Shetland, the very last one down the runway. Yeah, you gotta check to make sure everyone's in. So the tiger lilies have started blooming in my garden and you can hear in the background the tractor, that's Arnie. He's uh, wrapping bale bales of hay again, still. <laughs> he hopes that this is the last of it tonight and then we plan on making dry bales. We are just waiting for some dry weather. Anyway, I'm going to call this a night. Sorry I didn't uh, do a video yesterday, but I was exhausted by the time the day was over and I thought I was just going to retire early that night. So, hope you'll join us again tomorrow for the next episode at Utopia Farms. Bye for now.